to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, hopefully, yeah, I'll oh, praise Yah, praise Yah, praise Yah, blessing, uh, dear family of Yah, brothers and sisters and foes and spires of liberty, whoever you are, praise Yah, praise Yah, praise Yah. Well, thanks to the Most High Yah, I'm glad again to be here on this, uh, Wonderful Shabbat day. I hope everyone was edified again. Pastor went went over again and went you know a little bit farther, a little bit deeper, a little bit more understanding about Gentiles, about Noah. You know, all that was very, very rich, very, very good. A lot to uh, glean from. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I uh, I assume that I am coming in quite well. Hopefully. You now, as we start this uh, this edition of Blog Talk Radio, this is uh, Brother Shane, Teacher Shane, Elder Shane, uh, just a servant of Yah, Saint of the Most High Yah, uh, called to a uh, certain purpose to fulfill, to fulfill the the pleasure of Yah. I am a teacher, and uh, that is a, a gift to the body. Here to uh, bring uh, everybody to unity of the faith for the edifying of the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As just as we saw the pastor today, you know, uh, a minister in his administration of the Spirit. And we thank the Most High God for that. And I pray everyone, uh, uh, as Elder Spinney uh so delightfully says, got a takeaway on today's message. I know I did, and a lot of us did. And I know there were certain, you know, saints last night that called in and wanted to, uh, to uh, you know, have this uh, question answered. And I believe, you know, that it, Pastor Anthony he's answered it in the past. And again, you know, it's good to have a refresher and then, you know, some, to, you know, to uh, go with the refreshing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, bless you all. Bless you all. As the evening uh, grows close here, still light. Thought a uh, threat of rain is upon us, but it has not, you know, decided to uh, precipitate anything. And that's good, you know, because we've had gotten, as you heard last night, Pastor Sue, and it is evident we've got much rain here. It's almost like rainforest. Hallelujah. But praise Yah for all that. We're very thankful the Most High Yah has blessed us with all this rain. Certain aspects we do need it. He knows who we have need of. Well, praise Yah. Well, here we are again, thanks to the Most High Yah, as we've been, uh, We've been sojourning and traveling through the book of Hebrews. I don't know how long we've been on this. I don't know how many uh, teachings have been on that. I've been lost count. But, you know, here we are, chapter 5. We've already uh, entered the priest. We've been building up, you know, everything concerning, you know, what a Hebrew is. Uh, the book is written to us, the family of Yah, and we have been designated, we've been called the family of Hebrews. We are in the family of Yah, and we've been taking the book of Hebrews, you know, from for what it says.
for, you know, defining who we are as a people, who we are as individuals within this body. Because, you know, right on the onset, like I said, you know, you, you face value, you take the book of Hebrews and all that's going to teach, you know, tell us, you know, oh, okay, how to be a Hebrew and everything, in which it does. But, but when we get inside, you know, the substance of the book, we find, you know, that it has a center point and it has a heart that basically just emanates just the words and everything contained in it, you know, tells us of our core being, of our, our, of our, uh, our beginnings and of uh, the Holy One that is in us and the Holy One that has made us Hebrews. You know, it's all centered around Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And, and that is a good thing. That is a good thing. You know, we've got a lot of Hebrew camps out here, but, you know, uh, I don't know how many of them have really, you know, looked into the actual book of Hebrews itself and, and to, to really see what is the substance of a Hebrew. And as we're learning, you know, it, it all centers around Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. And as, you know, Pastor, again, Brought up again today about believers having the Spirit, Hebrews having the Spirit. You know, those that are Israelites having the Spirit and then having power. And then we've been reading here in the book of Hebrews of, you know, the one that has given us this power, the one that has all power given to him in heaven and earth, which is again Yeshua HaMashiach. So we can broadly proclaim that we are Hebrews because we know of the greater one on the inside. And we know how great he is on the inside because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we're learning that. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to, again, I'm going to kind of key it down a little tonight because... I don't want to get too complex with it as, we, you know, we can get in so many complex, I guess, understandings and expoundings, which I don't want to, you know, do that, understanding my brothers and sisters that may be on the other side listening to this. So I want to break it down to the simplicity which is in Yeshua HaMashiach and break it down simply. And hopefully, you know, up to this point, even in that, I have been that that those the hearers that are hearing are able to comprehend it, that are able to actually take away something, you know, that that is substantial for their walk for the week, for their walk from here on out. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise you. I think we when we left off last time. We was in Hebrews chapter 5 talking about the high priest. Now the reason, you know, we're going over this in, I guess, in a timely manner, I want us to understand, and we really need to understand, and I think the Hebrew, uh, the book of Hebrews is really, really trying to give us an understanding of our foundation, the cornerstone, the very core of our being, the very essence of, uh, of who we are as a people. You know, and I'm going to keep reiterating this, and it's going to sound like a broken record, but these things need to be rehearsed, 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 because these are things we need to rehearse to ourselves. We really, really need to grasp on to our real identity. As too many years we have been living out fake lives. We have been, many of us have come out of pretending to be like something when we knew we weren't something. When we were trying to fit in the world when we were not of the world. And now we've come to this point where we understand we're not of the world. The Most High Yah has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And we've got to understand this as a people. That, that, that we, the people of Yah, should no more be under the weight of condemnation as we were, you know, in, in, our, in our hypocritical walk as heathens. The old man if I can use the term, and I believe I can use the term. Praise Yah. 
But I, this book of Hebrews has been such a blessing to me, and I pray it has been a blessing to you, as many of you have probably all read it through many times. But it is, we want to take this time now to really, really relish what is contained in this book. You know, Pastor Flash, a lot of, you know, false teachers and evangelists, whatever they were, or the whole, you know, party of them up there. Uh, they have, you know, some within that have condemned this book. They said that it shouldn't be in here. You know, and as I read it, I'm going, really? Really you have a witness that this book shouldn't be in here? Because it seems out of place to your understanding, to your eyes of Jesus Jesus, or what are you going to call the exegesis? You want to read in and read out and read up and read down and you want to read it over here and read it over there and read it under a rock and read it on a tree and I mean and you want to pull out of it what you want to pull out of it and you want to put in it what you want to put in it without the Spirit actually doing the ministry. Yah is a Spirit. If we're going to worship or do anything with Yah, it's going to be in spirit and in truth. You know, this damn a head game thing of being a believer, being a Hebrew, is not going to get you nowhere. Not going to get you nowhere. You cannot walk this walk in the flesh. Yah is a spirit. So we will, in our spirit, praise and worship Him. And we, we're going to praise and worship Him and adorize and glorify Him and learn of Him is through the Spirit and through the truth that is received in our spirit. We may receive all this truth in our damn head and it do us no damn good. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I see so many believers want to get into this walk and try to walk it fleshly carnal when this is a walk of the Spirit. Many believers have not reckoned the old man dead. They want to walk this walk in, a, in, in an old bag, in, in an old bottle, and try to put the Holy Spirit in an old bottle and then wonder why all of a sudden things come to a, a calamity. All of a sudden, you know, uh, offense enters in and, and jealousy and envy. Because that old wine, that old wine skin can't receive this new wine. This new wine has got to be put into new wine skins. And, that, and, that, and that's why I really want to reiterate you knowing that yourself that you are a new creature. That your mindset and your frame of mind is knowing that you are a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things. You know, this might seem elementary, but it, it has great weight. It has great importance how your frame of mind is when you receive the Word. As I see a lot of people trying to receive the Word in the flesh. And no wonder there is offense. No wonder there is anger. No wonder there, there is all this abruptness within themselves. But he, 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 because, you know, darkness, it says, cannot comprehend light. So what is flesh going to do with a holy word when it hears it? It's going to repel. It's going to repel it. it. It's like spraying off. Fleshly off to you, to the word. I mean, it's going to, it's going to repel the word every time. Well, how does it repel the word? Well, just look at the people's actions. When they receive, you know, the, the, the arm of Yah reaching out to them. And it's being reached out to them in love. And then this person goes on, and then the way of truth, the way of truth is evilly spoken of. And their actions and their deeds and their flesh shows that they, they, these people were not the people of Yah. These were not Hebrew Israelites. So I implore you tonight to receive the word in the spirit. 
I know, I know many, many, many believers start out, you know, receiving, you know, everything with feelings and emotions. You know, and I've dealt with a lot of brothers, you know, over time, you know, they, you know, they've come into the faith and, you know, the Holy Spirit's rocking them back and forth and the milk is good and warm and everything. But they don't understand that it, as time goes on, uh, the Spirit is going to push you to mature. And that's just a given. The Spirit is going to push you to mature. There's a time that you've got to come off the tip. You've got to come off the feelings and the emotions. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is there to give you all these things. This comfort and this warmth and this hugging at first. But when it's time for you to walk, when it's time for you to fly, you will be pushed out of the nest. And you, the, the Holy Spirit loves you enough to, 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 to really, I get, I mean, words, 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 words. Loves you enough to, to push you to walk. There was a word I wanted to put there, but that, that just simply say it. Loves you enough to get you to walk. He's not abandon you in any form, any matter, but the Spirit of Yah wants many of us to mature. And I say, you know, over time, you know, even myself, you know, the I, reason why I can speak of this, because I myself was encompassed with the same infirmity. Well, yeah, I like, you know, I like the closeness of the Holy Spirit. I like, you know, the warmth and, and Him speaking and, you know, everything that was just so, so full. So full. But as time come on, uh, uh, went on, I had to grow up. I had to mature. I had to put on age. And, you know, I see a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters that, that try to resist this. But the love of Yah is, is going to uh, compel you. That's a good word. Compel you to grow. Going to compel you to walk. Going to compel you to be removed from the breast. Going to have you to stand and walk on your on two feet. And it's going to be there to help you to talk and help you to walk. But the feelings and the emotions are, are not going to be there as they were in the beginning. But as time goes on, the visitations of the Spirit get stronger and stronger at times when they are needed. At times when they are needed. And they are more fuller and they're more greater than the times when you were in your infancy. So we as Hebrews, we as Hebrews, we do grow up as a tender plant. But these tender plants don't get strong, you know, without, you know, the storms and the droughts and everything that they have to endure. And we should not resist these times. We now should resist these times of strengthening, these times of maturing, these times of, you know, getting us to grow up in Christ. Even though, you know, we might be 20 years in this, 15, 10, we're still children of the Most High God. And everything we do in our humility and in our mind and in our prayer and our repentance we still come to Him as children because we revere Him as the Father. He's the one. He's, he put His seed in us. And we are His seed. And we're carrying His seed. The church is carrying His seed. And we should manifest this very thing that is in us. And this is the book of Hebrews, I think, is trying to explain this to a greater degree to us. Well, how is it doing this? Well, it's showing us through the life of Christ. And it's going to get deeper and deeper into the life of Christ. Because if we're going to be conformed to His image, don't you think it's good for us to look at the image? We should understand this image that is growing within our spirit that our spirit should be emanating in this image that we read from these pages? 
And as this image is growing and manifesting, we see out there in the world that there is an image that's going to be going to be created. It's going to be brought up. It's going to come out from among the people. The people are going to create an image, an anti-image against Yah. And as you know, the sons of Yah are getting more apparent in this hour. We can, we can see on the world scene how much that image is growing. Well, that image out there is destroying families. We have an image here within us, within these pages. It's word in us drawing us together as a family. Because many of us come from broken families, from dysfunctional families. And now we're in a family that is functional, a family that has the, 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 the core ingredient to holding it together, to nourishing it, to strengthen it, which is called love. Nowhere else is this in the, in the world. That's why we're called out of the world. We don't want to be part of that world because all that is in that world we know is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We see that whole damn market system out there. Women out there put themselves on the market and they have to really make the, you know, the outside package look real good. For you know, for uh, for a buyer to come along and, and, and to take that wear, you know they got to uh, paint their face and, and and put on you know the tight clothes and everything. You know the, 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 that 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 showroom model's got to look good. It's going to be a Ferrari. You know you're going to dress it up like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, or is it going to be like a Pinto or or some kind of uh, Chrysler K car? But praise Yah for the image that we, we, we are gaining through the word of Yah. You know, Pastor even portrayed, you know, the mind of Yah. You know, when we look at these, you know, I guess call them skits, or when Pastor, you know, brings forth, you know, a, a living example, how many of us, you know, it, some of them are laughable and everything, but, you know, they are more than just entertainment. They, you know, they, 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 you know, is, it, it is trying to give forth a message of the image that we should be conformed to, or that our conversation should be emanating. And it's a good thing that the Spirit of Yah loves its children so much. Again, because out there in the world, out there in the world, they're training their children. Their children are receiving, the, you know, the. the it's its directives. It's receiving its image. I mean, the, the the image out there in the world. I mean, they're living it up to the fullest. And and here the people of Yah are struggling with the image of Yah. When you look on the world scene, the heathens and, and the publicans and all them out there that are outside of the body, they have no problem conforming to that image. And when we were in, in our wicked state. We had no problem conforming to that image. But now here we are called Hebrews. Now we, we have in our heart and our mind and our being one that called us, one that saved us, one that, that tasted death for every one of us, one that saw our need at the foundation of the world. So he provided a way of escape. And the only way we learned this, we've learned this through, you know, our studies of the book of Hebrews. And everything we see that he performed, he said, you can do also. You see, I put my, I put my testimony, I put my conversation here in, in black letters on white pages. Now, is this same word that you're reading, is it going to become, is the word, going to become flesh and, and and you're going to let it you know take place in your mortal body to destroy the deeds of the flesh as Yeshua did yeah, he come and he lived in simple flesh yet without sin and, and, and how many ways can we deny I mean the biggest I think of uh, 
denying that Yeshua HaMashiach has come in the flesh, is not casting out devils, not healing the sick, not raising the dead, not loving the brethren. I mean, really look at this for what it's worth. You know, we, we've got a backdrop called the world, and, 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 and if anything, that darkness, it, even though it's growing more grosser and grosser day by day, should be a contrast to make, you know, the people of Yah stand out even more. And I hope it does. The stronger it gets, I mean, we should raise up a standard, and the most high Yah is going to raise up a standard. And we should let him raise up a standard in us as his family, as, as the one that, oh, Yah, you, the, the children you gave me. And we are his children. And we read this account in the book of Hebrews. The Hebrews are his children. I am the children which Yah had given me. And how he looked to a whole millennium, 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 looked on, looked on our needs, looked on our faults, and provided the way of escape. He's been a good Yah to us. Only true and wise Elohim. He seems, I think, you know, Israel should have a, should, should make an end to the damn groves and the asteroids and the bales and, and the milcoms and whatever and Chemosh and whatever the, the damn strange Canaanite or Hittite, whatever. Dang crazy gods that may may be. Oh that oh that was back there in the old time. The same gods are here today. The different names. Different names. And what are all these gods, so called mighty ones, want you to do to conform to their image. You know, the gods of the gays and the homosexuals, the lesbians, the transvestites, whatever they may be. They, they, you can see that they, 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 they have no problem, problem looking like they're, they're mighty one. And we should not have a problem be conformed to his image. I thank y'all for our sisters. My pastor said we got, we, in this ministry, we got beautiful sisters. And, you know, we're not looking at the beauty of the hour, oh, they don't wear makeup, you know, the world looks out, oh, they're just drab and, and, and plain. No, our sisters have substance. They have, they have, you know, something on the inside. You know, the, the spirit within them makes them comely and beautiful. Praise Yah. Well, let us get <laughs> praise Yah's sakes. Uh, let us get on with our study here. Yeah, I didn't know we we're gonna go off on this tangent, but praise Yah, it must needs be. It must needs be we go this way. You no, know, Yeshua went through Samaria, and for a reason. But praise Yah, you know, for that word today, making it clear, you know. We're not a people of the flesh. We're a people of the spirit. We're the people of promise. And we've really, really got to cleave on and hold on and hug that with all our might. That's our identity. That's who we are. And we should boldly proclaim it. I remember one of my times of being a, a professional heavy metal musician. Boy, I really, really, you know, really portrayed that to the hilt. Now I look back, you know, I've looked now, look back on them, them years, and I just say, look at that stupid man. Man, look at that foolishness. But I can thank Yah for him having mercy on me even through all that. That I can put that, if I can use the word, I know many people might get offended, shit down, which it was, it was shit. Walk away from that fruitless life and then pick up the life of a Hebrew. And I have no regrets of being called a Hebrew. 
I've called myself a Hebrew for many, many, many years. Even before this ministry would, you know, actually, you know, understand, uh, I guess, the family of Hebrews. Most high all seems it fit, you know, for us to come together on this concourse to know who we are. And that's a good thing. So I'm going to start at, you know, verse 1 again. I'm not going to really, really, you know, get to, because we've already been here. We've already dealt with it. I could deal with it more and more. You know, expound on it. We could really fellowship with it. But we're just going to be in context of the word here. It says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to Yah, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who have, can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? And now notice, you know, that the subject here is high priest. But in all this, it is still communicating something to us. Something to us. Because it's talking about, you know, the, the, the high priest of a, of, a, of a sanctuary that was what, they, what the word calls one time worldly sanctuary. You know, it was, uh, you know, the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. How the Most High Eye, you know, you know, in its tender plant stage, you know, brought this up and planted this and, and brought this to fruition for a purpose. Because this is, you know, this is, should be emanating something to us, what we should be. And this time, and this hour, and if I can use the word, in this dispensation, that the Most High Yah is dispensing to us. Everything is in His time. Everything is in His judgment. As these, these high priests had compassion. And that's one thing about a Hebrew that makes them very, very different. Compassion. And they have compassion on who? The ignorant and them that are out of the way. You know, we read, you know, in the Gospels how Yeshua had compassion on them that were following him as sheep that had no shepherd, as sheep that were gone astray. Same thing here. Because his compassion is built around the infirmity that the priest himself had, knowing, you know, that he, that of uh, his, his weaknesses, of his shortcomings, of his faults, that these same people that, that, that were ignorant out of the way, they, they were encompassed with the same things. And verse 3, And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so for, also for himself, to offer for sin. There was a service. There was a sacrifice. You know, in, in all this that had to be performed. And verse 4, and this was what I want to center around today. Now, yeah, verse 4. By reason hereof, verse 3, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. The amazing thing that's working between the people of Yah in this time and this hour is the same system that, that should be in our relationship with one with another. And we'll get into that a little bit more. We'll expound on that a little bit more. So I'm talking about the one, the greater one on the inside. I'm about Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the high priest. He is the one making intercession for us in the heavenlies even as we speak. But as he's making their intercession for us, he should, he, it should be something going on within us, teaching us and guiding us and leading us in our relationship with one another. It's amazing that, that when you pray for one for healing, that, that, that when you go to your brother or sister because they have you know, made a fault, or a sin against thee, 
that, that you can bind or loose the relationship between you. That, that you have the ability to retain sin, and a lot of us do. You will retain that sin of that brother or that sister that has done so wrong, it's got you angry, got you upset, and may have broke this or said that or done this or done that, but you have retained that sin. And, and, that, and, and that bitterness and that anger and that hatred resides in your own tabernacle that is you know, keeping you from a loving relationship between your brother and your sister. When the Word says that you should go to your brother, you should go to your sister and sister alone and let them know what has taken place so you can get the devil out of the camp, so you can get the sin under the blood of Yeshua, so that you yourself can be freed, you can be loosed, from that thing that's binding you from loving your brother or your sister. Here we have the ability to remit or retain. Amazing when we retain, where the, the, the Yeshua said, that, uh, okay, you don't forgive, I'm going to turn you over to the tormentors. So this is teaching us a profound thing. It's teaching us about our walk and about our Hebrew family and what, you know, the conversation and the relation that we're having with one another. So out there in the world, you know, you, and many of us know, you know, they, anybody finds a weakness in you, they will exploit it. They'll use it as, you know, a, a way to put the heel on the back of your neck to power over you. It's amazing in Yeshua. You know, that we are here that we, you know, if one's overtaken in a fall, one's overtaken in a sin. You that are spiritual, you, you go to restore a, such another in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. And then there's the same also. Same going on here. The same words being reverberated. What was that talking about the high priest? Yeah. It's also talking about you. You understand that you have the high priest within you? And what is he going to teach you? What is he should be teaching you? What, what should you be learning from him? What did he do when he was on this earth? Oh, he cleansed the lepers, he raised the dead, he healed the sick, he forgave sins. Wow. Wow. And he said, you know, you, 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 have, a, you have a testimony, you have record of all that I did. And then he said, greater, th greater works, greater things are we going to do. And we're, we're living in the time where He's inside of us. That was a time when, when the Spirit abode, you know, without. The only time the Spirit abode in, in times of old in anything was a tabernacle. And it was in a, in a place called the Holy of Holies. And it was partitioned off by a great thick cloud. But uh, but the I read the account to when Yeshua was up on the tree, he uttered boy, uh, he uttered three words. It is finished. He performed the will of the Father, the delight of the Father, the work of the Father, and 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 this great thick curtain that was separating split in twenty. Hmm. Amazing thing going on there. And by reason hereof, he that is called of Yah. As for the people, so also for him, as for the people, so also for himself, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. Verse 4. And it says that no man taketh no man. 
taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of Yah, as was Aaron. And this word honor, this word honor in the Greek, no man taketh this honor. You should consider this walk, this calling, a honor. And we should take this honor unto ourselves. We should take this honor unto ourselves daily. This is an honorable thing to be called into. Now I'm going to exploit this tonight. And I'm going to expound this tonight as it should be expounded. So many times we read, you know, this word of Yah as something that is on the outside. And we need to quit reading it as it is on the outside when you yourself know that the word is on the inside. And if the word is not on the inside as as you heard the word today, as, uh, as, uh, as you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Receive ye the Holy Spirit, that the word may be in you. But this word honor, <coughs> Greek number, I'm using Strong's here, 5092. It's spelled like our word time. You know, like you tell time, well, it's almost 7 o'clock. But time, T-I-M-E, but it's, it's pronounced T-M-A. And this honor means a value. That is money paid. Or, and it says collectively or concretely, valuables. By analogy, esteem, especially of the highest degree. Or in it, 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 that itself has a dignity that is precious, that is pricey. And no man taketh this honor unto himself. And I pray every one of us in this room has taken this honor unto yourself as being called a saint, a servant of the Most High Yah King. Yeah, we're talking about. You know what the high priest did, and then, then, then later on in the book of chapter uh, chapter five, we, we want to go with the visions. Going from high priest to high priest, it talks about Yeshua Hamashiach. But this should be teaching something about ourselves, about this honor that we should be taking unto ourselves. Casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick. Because all these encompass, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer sins. So, and no man take this honor unto himself, but he that is called. And again, you know, and I know in, in, in past. Hebrew blog talk studies. We have we have uh, looked at that word called. We're going to look at it again because I'm going to bring it forth as a as as something to edify you, something to help you in your identity, something to help you in the image that you should be conforming to. There is image on the inside and should be on the inside. This word should be getting into our heart, not into our head, but into our heart. But how 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 do you get the word into your heart? You know, I have a hard time memorizing. You know, that's the problem. You shouldn't be memorizing. It might be a good thing at the beginning, you know, as a babe to try to memorize certain verses. But I implore you on those verses that you're trying to get within your being, the best way to get them into your being is to meditate. Meditate on that word. You know, you got in the book of Psalms, how I know David was all the time esteeming the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law. 
And he knew, you could tell that he had a great, great understanding of the law. He didn't even have no Bible or no scriptures read before him. But he meditated on the law. And that's how he got it into his heart. He, didn't, he, he might know the law verbatim, verse by verse. He didn't memorize it. But over time, by meditating on it, it became part of his being. And I think, you know, believers should really, you know, try to, I guess, if I can say, refrain from trying to memorize, because, you know, that school system out there in the world, it, it, it forces you to memorize, and then they want you memorize a certain section of a book, then you post, you know, to vomit it back out on the test to get a score, and then from there on you get a grade, and then you pass on to the next thing that you that you that you fill your head up with, and then you vomit it back onto a paper, and then you know three courses, three semesters down the line, what was ever in the first semester is almost pretty much forgotten by the third semester. So you know when the final exam comes, you got to cram all this first semester, second semester, third semester, fourth semester stuff back into your head so you can vomit it back out on a paper. You know that stuff out there didn't require no meditating on it. But this word of Yah has it goes beyond having to memorize it, and it should be going on. This is not an external word. Memorizing will be an external work. Whereas, whereas when you meditate on it, it becomes an inward, inward, inward. It is a work of the spirit. The work of the Spirit. It says, No man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of Yah as was Aaron. And Aaron was called of Yah as a high priest. And I'm, you know, going forth from saying, Now, here we are now, saints of the Most High Yah. Hebrews. We are called to be kings and priests. How are we going to learn in this time? And this, you know, in, in this, you know, little temporal state that we're living in, what what's going to bring us in the world to come when we inherit kingship? When we inherit priesthood? You know, we we're we're collecting now. We're we're we're, we're hmm. We're getting ready for that final day. We're getting ready for a transition. We can we can really say that we're getting ready for a final exam. But we're not regurgitating something we have memorized. Now this thing, when when it comes to a final, it, 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 it it's going to be manifested from our beings. These things are not, they're not going to be so much in our minds as much more they're going to be in our hearts. They're going to be in the core, central place of our beings. And and if our heart is in the heavenlies, and our hearts is with Yeshua. No thief can come in and steal. No moth can, can corrupt. No rust can corrupt. But if you know these things be external, these things, you know, we're trying to learn this in this world, then we got a thief we got to deal with. We got a moth we got to deal with. We got a worm we got to deal with. We got rust we got to deal with. But we get this thing into the spirit, which we should be. And that's why I'm really pushing meditation, meditation, meditate on the Word. Why do you think a lot of these, uh, these, these are strange, mystic religions push meditation? They want you to meditate to a demon. They want you to meditate to self, self-salvation. Oh, go learn your inner self. Sit there and hum for three hours. 
and to you know a whole room of hummers come into convergence with with one harmony and, and then when it's all done what was accomplished a bunch of folks just, just leave the room hoarse nothing better hey, but the pride was strengthened yeah yeah I'm more uh, religious but we are called of Yah. And this this called in the Greek it's the word it, it Greek it has a Greek number in the Strong's twenty five sixty four. And it's called call it call elo. Call elo. Call eo. Call eo, okay. Means to call. Properly allowed, but used in a variety of applications, directly or otherwise, to bid, to call forth whose whose surname was called. And I'm talking to you of a calling, especially here in the book of Hebrews, calling us to be conformed to his image. In Revelation 17, 14. You know, I did a small word study. And this, you know, this, this, you know, it might be so simple. And, you know, you might think it's so, it might be, some of you might think it's so base. You know, when, when we're reading the word, and, and this, you know, when I meditate on the word, I will take one word out of it, you know, like we've, we've uh, looked at the word honor. Now we're looking at the word called. Now we're, you know, we're going to look at the word called and we're going to meditate on the word called with other verses. And we're going to learn about being called with these other verses. You know, we're going to use the other verses of the word because we know Yeshua is one. We are one with him. And this word is one. We are our whole beings. And it's something that's a unique thing about Hebrews. They are whole. And you are considered yourself whole. But in Revelation 17, 14, it said, These shall make war with the Lamb. And I ask you again, you know, at the book of, of Revelation 17, talking about the, the whore and, and all those that committed fornication with her and, you know, Mystery Babylon and all that. These are going to make war with the Lamb. We know who the Lamb is. You know, the Lamb is on the inside of us. It's Yeshua HaMashiach talking about the lamb what uh, was the sacrifice it was talking about you know that that was the I guess that uh, let's look at it as as an image of humility that Yeshua HaMashiach uh, manifested himself in showed himself in. it was an image of his humility the lamb of Yah he cometh to take away the sins of the world. We're looking, you know, at Yeshua as the Lamb. And we know later on that He's coming back as the Lion. Not coming back as a literal Lion. We can look, you know, externally look on this world. Oh, He's coming back, you know, you know, with a big mane and big teeth and, you know, and paws and all this stuff. No, we're talking about nature. We're talking about image here. These shall make war with the Lamb. And we are pretty much are called the Lamb in this hour. We are the body of Christ. And we are called the Lamb because of our humility, because of our love one for another, because the sacrifice that we have made. And we, while we have made the sacrifice we have made, because we have looked at the Lamb of Yah and looked at that image, and we have looked at his image and say, yeah, that, that, that's part of me. I'm part of that. I want to live that. I want to experience that. I want to have fellowship with that. The Lamb. Now these are, we're in the last hour that they're going to make war with the Lamb. We look at these homosexuals and these bisexuals and these transsexuals and these quadsexuals and whatever they may be sexually and all their pleasure and disgust. These people, you know, in their rebellion against the war of Yah, they, they, they're pretty much in a unique form are making war against the family structure, against the way the Most High Yah 
made things to be. Male and female made he them. Male does not go into male. Female does not go into female. So, you know, in this time and this hour, we see that image trying to make war with the Lamb. But it says, these shall make war with the Lamb. And it says, and the Lamb shall overcome. And we should be overcoming them. And how are we going to overcome Him? And we've got to look, you know, in every aspect, meditate on what the Lamb of Yah did. How did, you know, when, when He hung on that tree, it said He triumphed over them in it. Because while we was on that tree and while he was taken down and put in the city, he went down to the lowest parts of hell and took the keys of hell and death. It took that realm of humility as the lamb was slain on the tree to triumph over them in it. These shall make war with the lamb. You know, there's no new thing under the sun. This thing is coming to a whole. This thing is coming to its oneness in this end time. As we read in the book of Revelation how that dragon is bringing up one with the people of this world to fight with the Lamb. These shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them. Why? For He is the master of masters, and the word the King James says, Lord of Lords. And he says, and King of Kings. And it says, and they that are with him, and you need to be with him in this hour and in that hour. Because the Lamb is going to overcome. And he says, Hey, you Hebrews, you children, you Israelites, you are joint heirs with me. You now, the, the assembly, are my body. I'm coming back for you. This time, in this hour, which is building even now. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. This is in Revelation 17, 14. Again in Second Peter, chapter one, verse three, it says, "According as His divine, His Yeshua Hamashiach, Yahweh, according to it, as His divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness." We have this divine power given unto us. All things that... What? The Spirit that is in me, Yeshua HaMashiach that is in me, now I have been given provisions, I have give, given supplication, I have been given needs that pertain to life and godliness. It's there to tap into. Yes. Yes. Because it's amazing when we were out there in the world, we knew what to tap into there to get all of our lust and all of our desires and all of our dreams and whatever it may be fulfilled. When we were walking in that life of self, but now here we are called to selflessness. When your life consists of looking at your brother and looking at your sister and we looking at all each other and seeing what each other has need of. If my brother is weak in this area and I'm strong in this area, i got a need that he needs. You know, I've got something to supply to him. Yeah, at one time I was weak in the very same thing. But even though I was incapacitated with the same infirmity, because I have experienced, I have been in fellowship with that weakness, and then Yeshua HaMashiach has come and taught me through His Spirit how to overcome. Now, now I have something that I can give to my brother. I have something that I can give to my sister now. Because the divine power has given us 
all things that, that pertain unto life and godliness. And the world is out there, you know, promising people the, the most lush and plush and, 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 and lavish temporal life. You know, it, it is promising them everything in the time of dust. Dust adding to dust. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of Him that has called us. Who has called us? The one that has given us divine power. But He's called us to glory and virtue. God, like, man. I really got to understand, well, you know, this thing that has been given unto me. So, you know, how am I going to get an understanding of what has been given to me? And, and, and then I got to get an understanding, you know, how, you know, to harness it and how to use it and, and, and how to, you know, dispense. Well, through the knowledge of Him. A lot of things out there that are given knowledge of a lot of other crap. But when you look into, you know, you go out there and you, you take all this knowledge and put it into your bag. Two years down the road, open up the bag, and, and your bag is all of a sudden, you know, through the journey of, you know, that temple that don't want a hole in it. And all of a sudden, all that sand has leaked out. And just in the corner of your bag, there's a few granules of sand, and they're like, damn, I wasted all that time for nothing. All that time, you know, through my labors and through my turmoils and through my own sufferings, you know, I've worn a hole in the bag. And that bag is so old that it can't hold nothing. And it is the same bag that we carried around, you know, in our times old, seems to be on our, you know, seems to be a fanny pack on our side now, in which that thing should be uh, should have been thrown away Many years ago, get rid of that thing with holes. Get you a bag that endures. The most high I told us about it, you know, you got to have about yourself new wineskins. And the things that you're going to receive of him is new. And that, that, that old stuff cannot contain the new. And I'm going to give you wine, but if you're going to put it in that old wine bottle, you know what's going to happen? It's going to bust going to bust on you. And we see how many people have, you know, tried to get the Holy Spirit into an old wineskin. And, and wonder why they're having the trouble. That, and I thought that, that, that when I would accept Christ, that, that, I, that all of a sudden I'd be thrown back on a plush couch and, and then, then this, this being would come and fan me and, and then another being would come and feed me grapes and another being would come and give me a nice, nice little cool drink and all i got to do is lay here day and night and be served. Servant, haven't you read of the servant who came and served? And you did through all his servants. Now that has now he has made you servant, and you look at his example, and you need to do as he does. He came not to be served, but he came to serve. And you think likewise. Is he going to walk in this walk and, and everything now is going to cater to you? No wonder that, that, that old skin is going to bust. And new stuff, it, just, it, it can't contain it. Because probably when, in the times of old, you just had a bag big enough to, just to rub two pennies together. 
And now in this walk, you you got a bag, this new bag that the Most High God has given you, that can hold gallons and gallons and gallons. Would you rather take on the, the little bitty pouch with a hole in it and, and the little thread showing at the side? Because they can barely hold two pennies? According as his divine power is given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through, 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 look at that, through, through, through. Oh, no, you, why you got to put so much emphasis on just one word? Well, that one word, you know, it, it has pivotal, pivotal meditating qualities about it. Through, through, oh, man, through the knowledge. You mean, oh, man, i got to be immersed in the knowledge of Him, you know, if I go through the knowledge of Him, that I can learn this glory and virtue. Yes. Again in First First Peter one five. First Peter one five. But as He which hath called you is holy, but as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Holy, glory, and virtue. And, oh, what, what? What did we read? And, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of Yah. Whoa. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's an honor. You know, I, you know, I don't think, you know, the sister should cover her head and, and should wear, you know, the appropriate dress and take off the makeup when well, you don't like the honor, do you? That the bro that, that, that the men, the brothers should to throw off all their pride and, and, and all their the, the, the things they think they know and, and all their machoism and all the crap that comes with a stupid man. But we should be taking this honor unto ourselves. It's an honor to be called holy. The world out there is making it a dishonor. To them, it is a dishonor. But you that is called of Yah, it is to Him an honor. Because he, he honored us to the point to put Himself on a tree and to die. And should not this same one in us propel us to be honoring and be honored and to honor in the same manner? Again, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 9. Listen to this. Listen, First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. I'm just going to read this. Listen, listen, listen. But ye are ye. It's only talking to a certain people. Only talking to you know uh, a certain family. But ye are a chosen generation. And then again, again, I'm going to say, but ye are a royal priesthood. But ye are a holy nation. But ye are a peculiar people. Notice that. Ye are a chosen generation. Ye are a royal priesthood. Oh, no. So that's the reason why. Ah, that's the reason why we're looking at uh, the, the Hebrews chapter 5 in this matter. Priesthood, priesthood. How are we going to learn the priesthood without a priest? Interesting, huh? And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of Yah. But ye are a chosen generation. But ye are a royal priesthood. But ye are a holy nation. But ye are a peculiar people that what? Ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you, called you, called you, called you. You heard his voice, and he called you out of 
darkness into His marvelous light. He said, you children, you're my children. I am the children of the Kaya. I've seen you in darkness. I want you with me. And so He's called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. And we shouldn't be like that one Lucifer that was in the light. But all of a sudden looked down on his own self and looked down in his own brightness and said, Whoa, this is coming from me. Oh no, it ain't coming from you, Lucifer. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But it says, which in time past ye were not a people. But are now. You don't worry about the damn past. Many of us still struggle with a past. You should put that crap behind you. You are now. That's why I say you start confessing every day. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I am a new creature. I don't know how many times you know. I will brother say you know. And, and other teachers, I keep hearing you say this. Are you, are you going to despise this honor? Which in time past were not a people, but are now all the people of Yah, which had not obtained mercy. Hey, we were walked in a time we had no mercy. But it says, but now you have attained mercy. And said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers, and I beseech you as pilgrims. And because I beseech you as strangers, and I beseech you as pilgrims, you abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul. As time passed, we had a lot of fleshly lust. And that's the reason why a lot of wars are going on within our being because we deal with damn past crap too much. We have not received the word. We got the word in our head, but the not word is in our heart. We not meditated on that. I am a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have come. I am a Hebrew Israelite. I'm no longer proud to be an American. Man, this damn song, at least I know I'm free. No, this damn country has become home, the land of the freaks and the home of the gay. That's what it's become. And I don't want to be part of that. I'm going to be part of this. I want to be part of the ones that is getting into the ark. Because the rain is coming. We have seen the former rain. But it is a time for the latter rain is going to come. But when the master comes and rises up and shuts to the door, just as the ten wise and the ten foolish come, and one is saying, hey, we got no oil in our laps. But the ten wives say, yeah, you need to go. You need to go where you can get this off. And wow, the foolish went and tried to, you know, to, to procure this oil. The wives were called in and the door was shut. Verse 12. Is having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Uh-oh. That whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they may, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify Yah in the day of visitation. To submit yourself, verse 13, to every ordinance of man for the Savior's sake, whether it be to the king or as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. When we know we live in a time 
where the governors and all them that are not there for the punishment of the evildoers. The evildoers are out there in, in high offices protecting the evildoers. And the king of this this forsaken, God forsaken country, whatever now, Obama, what abomination. Or to governors and unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of Yah, that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And it's free. You're free. And not using your liberty for a cloak of volitionists, but as the servants of Yah. It says, Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear Yah. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your own masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward Yah endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. <coughs> but if, when you do well and suffer it, ye take it patiently. Hey, this is acceptable with Yah. But a lot of us, the old flesh man, that, oh, that old bag, piece of shit that you once were, all of a sudden, hey, I've been doing good all the time. And you want to rise up and everything? Instead of taking it patiently, buffeted for your faults, you need to take it patiently? They said, yeah. Isn't it acceptable with Yah? And you look at that and you know, had to go and meditate in Yeshua HaMashiach. Had all them false accusers there. Crown of thorns pressed upon his brow. Whip on his back. Spit on his face. Beard plucked. Man that did no wrong, man that do no sin, but became sin for us. And he did it and he opened not his mouth, and he opened not his mouth for any word. And he took it patiently. The Lamb of Yah. This is a realm of humility that will stymie the world. Why? Why? While the world looks at it as weakness, we on this side of the impalement, we look at it as great strength. The vehicle of this humility that he loved the children this much to suffer for them at this level. He was called the Lamb of Yah and he delighted to do his will. And we should delight to do His will. And we should take this honor unto ourselves if we love one another. Verse 21, For even hereunto were ye called. For even hereunto were ye called by Christ, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. We see that image. We have that image within our being. That ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was gal found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Well, are, are, are we gonna are we gonna we gonna resist this honor? But committed himself to him that judges righteously. Are we gonna commit ourselves unto him? Are we gonna trust Yah 
in every aspect of our life. Well, I don't, well, this, this person don't want to follow y'all. My wife don't want to follow y'all. My husband don't want to follow y'all. This child don't want to follow y'all. Are you going to suffer righteously? Because some, you want to hearken to his voice? Should dad give you a ticket not to hearken unto his voice? Not to take this honor unto yourselves? When he called you, and probably some of you, the only one out of your own family? Whereas in time, though, you may have been a, a drug abuser or a drunkard or whatever you may be, and, and, and the whole family hovered around you, put their arm around you, hugged you, and, and embraced you, and, and, and loved you in that sin and wickedness and abomination. But now, all of a sudden, on this side of the calling now, you, that, that you, you have cleaned up, you're not no more naked, but you're clothed and in your right mind, they look on you and they go, what the hell happened to you? And you should take it patiently. Because the Word said that this thing shall be. What? The man's foe shall be they of his own household. Oh, I don't know if I can receive it. And the Word became flesh. Are you going to receive this Word? Are you going to let this Word manifest itself in your life so that you know of a sure that, that the Word became flesh? Well, how do you know that the Word became flesh? Because I feel the Word manifesting itself in me. And I have the power, and I have the glory, and I have the virtue now within me to perform the Word. That was once come and, and, and put its robe itself in flesh, put itself upon a tree, and, and was what was impaled for me. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he was suffered, he threatened not, but committed him. Self to him that judges righteously. This was a, the righteous judgment. Because he said, hey, 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 to do thy will, O Yah. I and the children which you had given me. I've seen all their lifetime. They were subject to bondage to fear. But I loved them enough to bring them out of that darkness. And I want them to be part of me, the light. So that they can see, so that they, they can then they, they can really, really embrace the life which you had created in the beginning. I don't want the children you, you have given me to walk in that thing which sin brought into this world, death. They do not need to live, to live under death's dominion, under death's rule. I want them to live under life's dominion and life's rule. And I'm going to teach them how to live life that you have created from the beginning before sin entered into this world and then death came by sin. But I know my children had tasted. And I know these children were all their time, time subject to death. So I myself, I am going to conquer this thing called death so that I can get my children away from that enemy. I love the children that much. The very thing that I created, I'm going to humble myself, become a lamb, and become my creation. And I'm like, oh, the Creator becoming His creation. Only for a certain few. Only for a few children which Yah had given him. And if you've been called, you part of that children. Said who himself who who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Now we're dead, we're dead. Sin should not have no more dominion over us. And we got to understand that that's part of confessing that new creature and saying that, oh, now, 
that, that, that sin had no more dominion. It means that, that whenever there are certain temptations, certain lusts, and, and certain desires present themselves to them, now I have power to overcome them. Whereas in times of what I just gave myself over and served that. I don't need longer serve that, but I'm going to serve the servant. That ye should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That's why I say you are whole. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Shepherd and bishop of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Romans 9 and 6. Not as though, not as though the word of Yah has taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Why? Why are you saying this, Most High Yah? Neither, 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 neither because they are the seed of Abraham because you know I like you the person we be the seed of Abraham we be the seed of Abraham we be this we be that we be over here we be over there we you know we be praising him we be praising him not as though because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but it says but in Isaac shall thy seed be called why Isaac why Isaac why Isaac Hmm. Interesting, huh? That in itself, I'm not. I was getting ready to go off on, you know, on in Isaac shall that seed be called, but I can't go there. Want to go there? <laughs> but but it in a nutshell. You know, we read it already. At one time, we were not the children of Yah, but now we are the children of Yah. It's amazing how the Most High Yah delights into making a barren womb fruitful. Now I'll leave it with that. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they... Notice this, seed of Abraham and the seed of Isaac. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Yah, but the children of the promise. Huh? The promise. Was Isaac a child of promise? Uh-huh. Go back and read that and meditate on that. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. Ephesians 4, verse 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, or Yeshua, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. How do you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called? With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Why? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, it says one Lord, one Savior, one Master, one faith, one baptism. One Yahweh Elohim and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in and in. And in you all this all does that mean everybody in the world? No. All those that are the children of promise. Behold, I 
and the children which Yah hath given me. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. We are the children of promise. Well, why you call yourself the children of promise? Because we have received this promise of the Spirit. Well, how did you receive the promise of the Spirit? Well, I received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Well, what is this promise of, 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 the, of the Holy Spirit? Eternal life. This world, this this damn wicked world out there, they're, they're, they've got scientists out there now that are racking their brains, doing many things that they can to bring man to a state of immortality. And it is sad. And just recently I watched something to where now there's certain science science that's out there and certain scientists and doctors and whatever they may be that is calling aging a disease. And I'm looking at this and they're, they're trying to defy God. They're trying to defy mortality. Mortality has been given to, to that temporal world out there. There's no way that they can they go beyond the, 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 the shore. You know, even you know, the water, the, the sea, the water cannot go beyond the bounds of the shores in itself because of a perpetual degree by the word of Yah. And these people think that they're, they, they can rise above mortality with their own knowledge and with their own understanding and with their own science, so falsely called, and reach in a state of immortality. And they themselves don't know the escape of the mortal like we do. We're serving the one that is bringing us eternal life. And we're getting ready, you know, we're getting ready to get into that discourse later on in chapter 5 of Hebrews. I mean, Ephesians 4 and 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Galatians 5.13 tells us, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but use your liberty as saying, but to love, but by love serve one another. First Corinthians seven, verse twenty says, "Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the master, being a servant, is the master's free man." Likewise also that he is called being free is Christ that ye are bought with a price. That honor, that honor, that honor. No man taketh this honor unto himself. But ye are bought with a price. Be ye not the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with Yah. Romans 8.29 for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So you that are called, your destiny, you should, oh man, what an honor. Your destiny, if you abide in His love, if you abide in your calling, is, is, already, is already formed for you. The only destiny is, 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 in this time and in this hour is to be with the King, to be with the One that created us. 
That is our destiny. We have been predestined to this. And because we've been predestined to this, that's why ye are called. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Again, on this same note. 2 Timothy 2.20 But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So ye that is called of Yah, are you going to take this honor unto yourself? Praise Yah, saints. Praise Yah. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr., and Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E. 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615 688 That's 1-615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. I praise you, saints of the Most High Yah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Saints of the Most High Yah, thank you very much again for Supporting us as we support one another, as we endeavor to get home. As many of us know that we are strangers and pilgrims who are passing through. And we're here receiving instruction how to get us through. And we should walk in his steps, you know, and them steps is always bringing us forward. You know, there is a map, there is a pattern that is laid out for us. That's what the word predestinate. We have a de- destiny that we need to get to to fulfill, you know, the pleasure and word of Yah. Because, you know, we're, we were in his mind in the beginning. 
And all this for the children of Yah, huh? Yes. Yes, yes, the message of salvation is great. It, 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 it is beautiful. It is powerful. It's something that's being attacked in this hour. But the people of Yah shall be strong, that know their Yah shall be strong and do exploits. So let us honor and let us walk in the vocation where we are called. Let us take this honor into ourselves. As we've been called into this. This is our destiny. Embrace it. Fulfill it. Walk it. Love it. Eat it. Drink it. This is your life now. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, praise Yah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Thank you, Brother Paul, again for posting scriptures. I know I was really going on a burst right there. It's a good thing, though, because it is all for the edification of the body, for the perfecting of the saints, which I know it must needs be in this time, as I must strengthen that which remains. Praise Yah. Thank you all, saints. Love you all. Thank you again for supporting. Let us support one another. Pray for one another. Let us get home. You know, we're one day closer to getting home. He that endure, you know, uh, hey, the end of our faith is the salvation of our souls. So let us get home, saints. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh-oh, look at him looking.